Hey, good morning, everybody. Got the shades on. I got two uh, uh, overhead lights here. It's really bright looking at the screen. Everything's reflected. Uh, so anyway, we got uh, Mr. Sticker Mania joining us there in the, in the video here. Uh, there is a link in the descri description, uh, both to Frank's YouTube channel and also to his eBay channel. Always a pleasure to have Frank in. We have a good time. Uh, Beal stuff. Are you at the dentist? I will be tomorrow. I tell you that tomorrow's dentist day, Brad. And uh, I'm getting a couple of caps put on, I guess. Well, that'll come later, but they're doing that. Maxter, welcome aboard. Yeah, Mr. Sticker Mania, Frank. Uh, always a pleasure to have my board. Hey, John Dagon, welcome aboard. Uh, and I got him. Uh, let me just check some stuff here behind the scenes. Mr. Sticker Mania. Yeah, Frankenstein Travis will be joining us. So uh, the last thing I got from Mr. Sticker Mania, I got a big shout out. Uh, I was super happy to have the Beatles in mono. This is a book. I've kept it in the shrink. The photos and everything about it are available online. Uh, but it's just the idea of the completion of the Beatles in mono 2014. I got it all. I had an interesting discussion with... Uh, an individual on my channel commenting on an earlier video about what's the deal with the Beatles and mono. And the answer simply is that the Beatles, uh, the whole idea of stereo was looked upon as being something of a luxury, uh, an oddity, a niche, um, uh, um, certainly removed from the mainstream. Most people are getting their music through mono listening on mono uh, record systems, record players. And so the Beatles focused on the mono with their original releases. Keep in mind they're a 1960s band. They, they make it as far as 1970, but not much beyond it. There goes the producer, the boss, we call her. But, um, yeah, always that, uh, especially with things like this, because they don't generally... Uh, uh, generate the kind of views of my daily live stream do or does. But uh, yeah, if you could do that, always helps out. Try and get the word out on Frank's channel and his efforts. So uh, I've already sent him a link to it. He'll be coming in, scheduled to begin in five minutes. So uh, we'll see how he does for in terms of punctuality. But uh, anyway, um, the Beatles and mono. And so there are some differences, I think most notably on the White Album, where Ringo in the stereo goes, I got blisters on my fingers on Helter Skelter. And I go, bam, you know, the big guitar end, very clean sound, just bam. And um, I got blisters on my fingers. Funny line, great line, for Ringo. Uh, and then also uh, with the um, uh, Sgt. Pepper, the, on the, from Good Morning, Good Morning to the Sgt. Pepper reprise, you got that, you know, the chickens, the rooster crowing, go, and uh, all that comes through a lot cleaner on the stereo than it does with the mono. Frank, we are live now. Welcome to the show. I can see you got some good stuff laid out. Uh, so we're always interested in seeing what Frank's going to bring. It, it's never a dull moment. You never know what's going to be there. I see Travis is in the house. Happy. Yeah, we'll be right. If you in one second, we'll be yeah. right there. No worries, no rush. We're uh, <laughs> we're all comfortable. I just want to say uh, to Frank, though, thanks again for the Beatles and Mono getting this book. Uh, what a treasure, right? And um, the Beatles Mono. I thought it would be in, in perpetuity and available everywhere. The box set. It is not. Um, they did it. It's done. And uh, now if you're going to the store and just go into the racks and pick something out, you're really going to be limited to the stereo box and that's it. But, uh, you know, secondhand market, it's out there, but they go for a premium. These Beetle and Mono, some of them up to $200. Crazy. Frank, welcome to the show. And, uh, of course, Travis. How's it going, well. Rachel? Yeah, we're all ready to go. Uh, tell us a bit about yourself, your channel. Uh, it's always my pleasure to have you kids on board. Let I'll make it big so everybody can see the goodies laid out. Up, you know, you got the great environment. Hey, you got to let it be naked back there. That's one I'm looking for. Yeah, just got that in today. That is going for a premium these days, Frank. Everything, there's nothing really on the cheap with Beatle uh, records and memorabilia and the like. 
But let's see what you have today, what you're excited about. Tell us about your channel. I've got links to both your eBay channel and your YouTube channel yeah. here in the video description. Our eBay channel is Sticker Mania. Our eBay store is Sticker Mania 2853. Yes. Been there 17 years. Almost have a feedback score of 13,000. And I'm ranked in the top four uh, Beatles memorabilia sellers in the United States. Wow. A uh, huge cr uh, credit to you. I mean, to, per to perform at that kind of level for that period of time is quite the uh, credit to you and to uh, to what you're uh, bringing to the... Well, uh, it, it was, it was, I wasn't doing much five, six years ago, but I, I kept growing. Yeah. Well, you're doing very well now, Frank. And uh, it's always the case onwards and upwards. We got some really interesting people that you wouldn't think are the biggest... Beetle collectors, but they are fans of yours, and they come in and make sure that they watch whenever you're uh, happening. Yeah, I know it's me, because, yeah. and then my YouTube channel is uh, Mr. Sticker Mania, and that's how you get a hold of me on a, on an email is uh, yes. Mr. Underscore Sticker Mania at Yahoo.com. And I'm just going to get your. Uh, eBay channel going sticker mania. I got your YouTube channel. I dropped that link, but we might as well do this for you as well. Boom, My a whole you, bunch of you, YouTube channel is almost up to 1,400 subscribers. Ever since I posted those uh, two parts of peeling the butcher covers, I've got like yeah. 30, 30 new subscribers. Uh, congratulations. Well deserved, Frank. It's hard to build a channel, but you're going about it the right way. Just quality product after product. You're constantly uh, putting out uh, items that are really interesting uh, of me to me personally. My new lighting. Yeah, this is just because it's the daytime. Normally I broadcast early in the morning and the sun is like, you know, we're coming up on uh, uh, in an hour. It'd be 12 noon, high noon. The sun's coming in very bright. So I got the shades on because I normally don't broadcast at this hour. I go early. But uh, Frank, done, man. I know, man. Now, what do you got going? What's happening? Uh, I just start off with a little bit of Let It Be because of all the news yesterday. Yes. Coming up May 8th, Disney going to be streaming the original Michael Lindsay Hogg uh, presentation of uh, Let It Be. So this is the, uh, this is the laser disc. This is the ultimate way to have let it be until uh, May 8th. And then this will be kind of obsolete, but I still think it'll be a collector's item. It'll always be a collector's item, Frank. There's That's the one thing about the Beatles because um, those laser discs came at a time in history. And if you've got an official Beatles release on that, it's part of the collectability that uh, goes with the uh, dedicated Beatles fandom. Look at that. It looks like a big CD compact disc. But these are the old laser discs that uh, people have put in. The quality was better than VHS tapes, but uh, they they were kind of clunky and awkward to run. They uh, and, and if you play them much, they get laser rot. But this one ha hasn't hardly been played. Oh, now I did not know that about them. That they didn't have much durability, uh, no. if or you know sustainability. And then we got the. Um, the Betamax that came out before VHS. Yeah. The small video. Now the thing, okay, I got to talk about this. Betamax, a better picture, superior picture, Sony that. proprietary stuff. But the thing is, I'll make it big. Hang on. We'll go here. But the thing is, is they lost out because they were proprietary. And VHS, which got into the hands of everybody, uh, won the battle between VHS and beta. Two formats, similar look, beta superior picture, more compact size. It should have won, but by controlling it, the market so tight, Sony lost out on uh, you know, the big uh, wars for the uh, format. VHS. Yeah, I, ha I have a Betamax Hi-Fi player, and this plays much better than a VHS, but like you said, they yeah. didn't stand a chance to end the battle. But, yeah, really great to have. Now, I always ask prices on these things. What does that kind of item go for? In uh, this is uh, uh, $88. Oh, 88 Okay. That's uh, anything you can get. Anything Beetle-related under 100 bucks 
in 2024, kids. Uh, but you're this, doing this right. is a 122 on the laser disc because it's still in the uh, factory shrink from uh, yeah. Japan. Pioneer Video Incorporated. Yeah. They were made in Japan, imported to the United States, and sold here. Yeah, just lovely, uh, Frank. Great to see that. Let it be uh, coming out May 8th, folks. There's been a moratorium on it for years. This is a picture disc or picture sleeve from uh, 1970 here in the United States. Yes. And this is the um, the uh, 1990 um, picture disc from the United Kingdom for Get Back. You can see them on the rooftop there. Yeah, great shot, of course. And this is a late uh, 1970s pressing uh, from the United States. And it's not a gatefold, but they... They put this poster in with it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because we're more often, uh, you'll see the uh, gatefold with the red apple for the U.S. release on that 1970 uh, U.S. version. And I, I was supposed yeah. to get a 1970 uh, U.K. box set of Let It Be today, but it's not coming until tomorrow. So one day, the timing is bad on that, but I was yeah. going to show that. Well, it, it is great. Now, you don't have another one handy right now because the 1970 box set in the UK, and interestingly enough, where I am in Canada, we got the book, we got the box. It came with a uh, very flimsy book, very flimsy box, both of which don't hold up well over time. And it's few and far between when you're going to find a book that's all together and the box that's in yeah, any the, kind of the shape. What I got all. coming in is in excellent shape, and the book's all together, and it's uh, worth about uh, close to seven hundred dollars because it, it's all uh, almost like you say they're so fragile, and most of them are all in bad condition yeah. by now. But they were they asked the United States Capitol Records to release the box set, and they, they turned it down and said that it was too expensive. It would never sell in the United States. Isn't that interesting? Because here in Canada, of course, we did go all in on it. And I'm not sure. Yeah, there's a hint of mine right over there. That's actually a part of the box. That's not the complete, but it's kind of the inner sleeve part of the box with the book inside it. And uh, like so many, my book fell apart very shortly after I bought it. I just looked at it once kind of thing. I know. And you, you can't even uh, open that up without this, what messing without up. some sort of trouble happening. Yeah. So I, I got I looked on the Internet how to glue these things, how to bind them back, and I glued it back, and it looks great now. So One more thing related to uh, the Disney Channel, uh, Disney Plus. This was a 1992 uh, giveaway when they had eight days a week of Beatles. Uh, they played uh, Beatles specials for eight days on the Disney yeah. Channel, and they and if you entered and uh, and won, you got that uh, photo there. Oh, great shot! Early early Fab Circus. That's right. When uh, that's about a month after Ringo joined the group. Wow. Our George's uh, black eye had healed up by that time. Yeah, Pete Forever, Ringo Never, George Harrison uh, getting a black guy from an angry fan who uh, <laughs> was uh, part of the Pete Best team, Team uh, Pete Best. You know, it would have been a hashtag uh, Team Best back in the day. Ringo was uh, seen as the Johnny Come Lately with Roy Storm and the Hurricanes coming on board, joining the Beatles as the world-famous drummer we know him today. But when the original, when he first joined, there was quite the kickback against Ringo joining in. A lot of people uh, loyal to Pete Best saw him as part of the band. And uh, George Harrison actually won a, 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 a punch in the in the in the eye for his trouble during all I, during. I think that was uh, the first night they played at the Cavern after Ringo had joined the group. But the uh, I'm excited about the uh, Let It Be uh, being. Uh, restored yeah. and released i'm sure they did a great job on it and there are sections of it we've never seen before in the get back documentary uh the eight hour that was on disney plus like the uh, last three songs the promos for uh let it be long and winding road and two of us uh that's not in the uh get back documentary yeah uh, Richard Ricardo Jimenez, question for Mr. Sticker Man, Sticker Mania, Sticker Man Frank. I have a John Lennon signed baseball. 
How much is that worth? John Lennon signed a baseball? Uh, there's a, a lot of baseballs out there signed by the Beatles or Pete Rose that broke up the Beatles, but I, the, you'd have to have that baseball uh, authenticated by uh, one of the four uh, main authenticators in the world. Yes. And if it were to be authenticated, what would be, pardon the pun, a ballpark figure on something like that? Uh, cl close to uh, $4,000. Four grand, Richard. You 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 got you're playing around with four grand there, so not bad at all. But ninety percent eBay can't control it. Nine over ninety percent of all the uh, signed Beatles items on the internet are uh, not real. Tell uh, tell the kids, uh, people that are new to the Beatles story about their entourage, the people in their circle that would sign items for the Beatles. So That's you'd be heart. a member, a fan. You're writing your letter to Ringo. You go, gee, Ringo, I, me, I love you so much. And you get an autograph, but it would not, in fact, be the Beatles. But the guys that ha hung around with the Fab Four got pretty good at copying their autograph. What do we look at? Neil Aspinall, right here. This is, this is, the, this is the kingpin of um, fake autographs. Neil Aspinall. Okay, now, so the one on the left, that is the real one? That is a fake one? No, this is a COA from Roger Epperson saying this Neil Aspinall autograph is authentic. Okay. And it's cool because it says it was done at May 3rd, 1966 at Abbey Road Studios. Yeah. And that would have been right at the time when paperback writer Rain, Revolver, and the butcher cover about to be released. All that was going on at that time. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, 66, just the last year that they were uh, touring around. Little Beatles, Corner, Patricia, just wonderful, salivating over some of that memorabilia. You look great in your glasses, right? Well, thank you. This, this sold right away uh, yesterday on eBay for $122. Wow, that's a good price on that. I mean, Neil Aspinall, head of the Apple Corps, Neil ends up rising right to the top. He's just one of the lads in Liverpool, friends of the Beatles, knows them, and then he ends up uh, rising right through the ranks to the very uh, pinnacle of uh, Apple Corps. So, yeah. uh, and of course, sadly, he's no longer with us. Uh, Neil no. passed away some years ago now. But I told the story that. Uh... At February 11th, after the Washington Coliseum concert at the British Embassy, yeah. they were roughed up and they cut some of Ringo's hair off. And John Lennon told Brian Epstein behind closed doors, said, don't you ever put us in a position like that. And right away, Brian Epstein told Neil Aspinall and Mal Evans they had to learn to copy, to make, uh, forge their autographs real quick because the Beatles couldn't be bothered anymore. Yeah, so that's what that's what happened, Dave. As Frank's explaining, uh, Mal Evans, uh, of course, the road manager for the Beatles, and he ended up getting into production. He helped out on some of the music. Uh, Mal um, dying in 1975, 73, 75, somewhere in there. 75. 75. He, he uh, was uh, medicated, and he had, uh, I don't know if it was a toy gun or what, but... He pointed it at the policemen. There were two policemen, I think, and they they shot him right away. Uh, we got Frank. Did you sell your Zep H O T H Hoth jukebox seven inches? Well, House of the Holy. House of the Holy. That's what he said. Yeah. Nope, I haven't sold it yet. I sent an offer out for four hundred ninety nine dollars. Four ninety nine is the uh, asking price on this. It's got looks like it's got a picture disc with it. Those are the jukebox strips. Oh, okay, that would go on for the song. Okay, on the on the jukebox player, yeah. just made out of thin paper. Mercy. <laughs> All right, how so holy? Led Zeppelin, seven inch. It's got a Dancing Days, Dire Maker. However you say Dyer Maker correctly. Yeah, yeah. Song remains the same and the crunch. Uh yeah, great album. Uh How's the Holy. The interesting thing about that is um Dyer Maker is supposed to be Jamaica, but the, apparently they were pretty ripped or fairly high at the time. 
<laughs> so Jamaica came out like dire maker, kind of you know. They're a little high. Uh, that's yeah, I, I think I Mazzy was having a hard time pronouncing that. Uh, I think that's out. what it was. I think that at least that's how the story goes. Devin, that's hilarious. Mercy, Roy Roy Orbison with the sunglasses. It's just super bright in here. Look at this. I'm like, you know, I'm going to be taken aboard the ship or something. But uh, really good. A couple more Zeppelin items here. This is my uh, third favorite band of my own uh, hit list of great bands. I just love Led Zeppelin. So I got this in today. The All right. Monarch pressing RLSS of Led Zeppelin II. Oh, no. And my neighbor's not here in my condos, and I cranked it up. My son oh, was blasting. My. When Travis got here, it was blasting. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, the most powerful rock album ever recorded in the history of music. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a great album. That Robert Ludwig, highly sought ever. And it's got Robert Ludwig on both sides in the day. Yeah, it's got RLSS, which stands for Sterling Sound on both sides. On both sides. And, and yeah. the key the key to it is got MO on the bottom of the label, which means it was made out in L.A. a couple blocks from Peter Grant's office and he would go by there um every other week making sure they were making the best pressings ever yeah that highly sought over and uh sadly vinyl community for you good news for frank bad news for you that thing demands a premium dollar in 2024 what do you think i'm going to sell this for uh right so well, it's yeah. almost excellent condition yeah i'm telling you we're you're starting to get near that uh three thousand dollar mark two thousand 2000 this is the 4000 okay the, so you got the turquoise now that's the zeppelin one it first showed up this is the second one i had the last one i showed you in the last uh yes. interview it sold for 3300 but this is in better shape than that one okay that's why i went with the 3000 i was confusing the zep 2 with that zep 1 cuz i remember you grabbed 3000 for one there's that plum label atlantic this is an A1, B1, very first pressing, very first pressing of a Led Zeppelin album anywhere in the world. Wow, absolutely uh, drooling time. It, Hi, Melly. It, it plays pretty amazing also. I'm just going to uh, watch my own show. I forget, you know, because uh, I'm so used to doing it. That's the, original, that's the original inner sleeve on the Led Zeppelin turquoise. You have to have that patent number down there. Yeah. Made in England. And with the Led Zeppelin II, you have to have the 1969 Atlantic um, inner sleeve. Yeah, nice. I mean, when you have all the accoutrements that goes with an album, and you helped me out, Frank, with Emotional Rescue, Rolling Stones, you have look, the original post. Look, look how flimsy that cover is. Yeah, how how it survived all those years is not amazing. a lot of money put into the production on some of that. No. Okay, Richard uh, James is uh, hot after question. He goes, uh, Mister Sticker Man, <laughs> Frank. He goes, I have an offer for you. You cannot refuse my offer. It's the Abbey Road Ringo and Paul signed. I'll pay you two thousand cash money, hand delivered. It's an amazing offer. Yeah, huh. you better uh, double that. You got to double it up. But there Paul it is. McCart There's Paul McCartney yeah. and Ringo only because uh, Ringo didn't sign his last name there in 2005. Right. So this is a later signing of that uh, classic album. And many cite Abbey Road as uh, the Beatles' best, as their personal favorite. It and talk, because it's a later about album. That, talking about that softball. This is the premier. I don't think he authenticates anymore, only for Perry Cox, Frank Casio. Yeah. So you're saying there's like four individuals that are world uh, widely recognized worldwide as being experts. There's when Perry Cox COA right there. Verifying these autographs. It's got both, it's got both of them. Yeah, man. But then it, there's um James Spence. And uh, the PSA DANA guys in uh, yeah. in California that do it for Pawn Stars, and there, there's Paul Wayne in uh, England. So that'd be the five that I would trust. 
and Roger Epperson also from Real Autographs. That would be yeah. Fun. Here's the thing, Frank. So we're looking at Paul Ringo. Both of them still with us. What would that go for if those autographs were John Lennon and George Harrison, neither of whom are with us anymore? Would that affect the price? Yeah, it would be uh, twice as much. But if you had all four of them on here from 1969, it would be a $100,000 album. Oh, my God. Yeah. You could buy a house with that. And put a cabana, on, uh, uh, an addition on the whole thing. Well, I'm showing my autographs. I got this, uh, the Ringo Starr um, sign, you're 16. And this was done in 1990. And it's got his whole name there. Wow. But that what makes the autographs worth more is when it's on something music related. And this was a number one song yeah. for uh, Ringo in 1973. Yeah, because sometimes, Frank, like, you know, you'll see a celebrity or something, and you're at a restaurant, you're bothering them, but you go, gee, mister, I love your TV show or your record, whatever, and could you sign my matchbook or whatever they got handy, the menu, and they'll get a, an autograph on something like that. But always worth more if you got an album or a poster or a photo, something like that. I mean, hand-signed, amazing stuff. Yeah. And I guess in this age of auto pen and the like, I guess there's a lot of that going around now. There's people in Europe that practice for years to perfect uh, Led Zeppelin or the Beatles uh, set of autographs. They make a living off of it. Yeah, I mean, forgeries are, would be a constant problem. Yeah, there you go, Michael. If you had all four, you'd be able to buy a new house. Yeah, this is this, great. Oh, my. This is what I got today. You want to get the ones that say Made in England on it? Yeah. It was, it was originally $59.99, but it's a lot more than that now. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. It sure is. What, what, uh, what's the uh, asking price on that, Frank? I haven't put it up yet, um, but I'd probably give you a deal and just uh, break even on it if you were able to afford uh, $200 for it. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's tempting. You're tempting me. That's in my range. That's in my range. Yeah, let's, uh, I'll, I'll email you after the show. Okay, here we go. This is the first time I've ever had an original. They only sold 1,200 of these through a TV offer before they got a cease and desist uh, yeah. order from Apple Records to quit selling them. This is the real, real, real deal. Made out of poster board. You can see John Lennon's shoulder down here. The uh, printing is all clear. It's not blur. And it's got the original uh, inner sleeve from Adam 8 Records. And it's got the uh, insert. Yeah, this is an item that was sold, uh, I think, primarily through television, late night commercials, that kind of idea. That's, the, that's the original uh, mail-in insert to get other items from Adam 8 that was inside this. And you have to have a record that has the matrix that's etched on the, um, you can't see this, but it's etched on side of the orange label. And yeah. that's, that's how you know you got an original. And this is, is this essentially like a, a later the Lennon 75 Lennon comes out with rock and roll? Is that yeah, yeah, it's it's basically the same. There's a few uh, tracks uh, just because an angel baby that's not on uh, rock and roll. But, yeah, so but, again, but, unauthorized. It was out. They put the thing that. Uh, but, but because uh, John Lennon used part of uh, Chuck Berry's song, uh, "Can't Catch Me," "Can't Catch Me" in "Come Together," he he. Uh, gave approval for them to release this and then the uh his uh, apple records got real upset about it and said you can't do that uh kimbo asked the question is the uh, let it be naked sealed yes it's sealed my god it's sealed with a uh it must have been a price tag there's a big uh uh it looks oh. like it's a factory shrink hole there, but I yeah, mean, it's factory sealed. Wow! Holy smokes! Holy smokes! Sue, I know you get excited whenever there's a a beetle item like that. Let it be naked. 
uh, of course, highly sought after. Gosh, I get excited about that. She probably doesn't get excited because you're going to spend some money. No, don't yeah. say that to Sue. Holy smokes, we don't want her. Uh, yes. Well, I don't want to activate her. Holy <laughs> smokes. We're going to the dentist tomorrow. You talk about spending money. My God. Six grand at the dentist. Yeah, it's going to be. That's going to hit the pocket. Yeah, I got that coming up too. Um, big uh, dentist. I'm sure I'm going to have to spend a lot of money on my teeth. Yeah, uh, Kimbo, I think we're going to do exactly that little thing. All right, look at this, folks. This is a factory seal, got it from Perry Cox, a 1978, uh, numbered 1713. This was the first uh, 3,000 box sets that were made by uh, Capitol Records. They imported them from England. Yes. And my um, friend that Wax doesn't like very much, Tom Port, he bought five of the sealed album. They're all sealed inside. And my other box that I have, Keep up five of them right away. Okay, these are amazing. If you're looking, these uh, contain uh, basically what? How many albums are in each one? There's uh, 13. 13 albums. So basically, the Beatles discography. And do uh, they? Yeah, go ahead, Frank. They're all sealed inside with this little hype sticker from Capitol Yeah. Line. And Tom Port, the ones he sells as hot stampers are... Um, Revolver, Rubber Soul, Sergeant Pepper, Abbey Road, and Let It Be, because they're all uh, been recutted by recuts by uh, Harry T. Moss. Harry T. Moss, and generally uh, you're going to see that HTM reflected in the dead wax on those kids. Yeah, they they didn't uh, about a year ago. They didn't realize that Tom Port already had it figured out about the Harry T. Moss. But the vinyl community didn't. But now yeah. George Borden is swearing by it, and it's affecting the price on these Harry T. Moss pressings quite a bit. Yeah, well, and you think about uh, George. He's a big Beatle fan. He loves the Fabs, and he, he, uh, he, he's, he's an expert on their pressing. Yeah, this is that special poster they put in the um, first three thousand box sets. Yeah, that's Capitol Records BC thirteen down there on the bottom. Yeah, it's all that, Rishi. It's all that. But uh, highly sought after album. Um, it came out around 2002, 2003, Let It Be Naked. Uh, these ones that Frank's got, these are great because it's a great way to, way of getting all analog uh, pressings of the Fab's uh, discography. Uh, so uh, it's great. I, I, I sent out a... I sent out an offer today on this at uh, $1,888. My God. Ouch, ouch, and ouch. Big dollars, kids. That's like uh, dental prices, Sue. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do one unboxing if that's okay. Yeah, we love all this stuff. It's such a, a joy for me, a lot of fun, because I'm such a Beetlehead. And, of course, I love Zeppelin, the Stones Classic Rock. You're always getting great items in. Yeah, and we the, all enjoy the, the shorts I make on YouTube, the ones that get the most views are pretty much the ones that have uh, real rare Beatles or real rare Led Zeppelin. Yeah. That's what yeah. gets the uh, thousands and thousands of views. Yeah. But I have had 4,000, I guess, I don't know if I said this or not, 4,000 views of the uh, butcher, me peel, peeling a butcher cover. The first yep. part is eight minutes long, and the second part is, uh, is it 13 minutes long? Second part's 13 minutes long. The uh, Yeah, the kids were uh, telling me here to say, Rachel, have you seen Frank's, uh, he peeled the uh, Butcher album on his uh, YouTube Sure, I thought it was a great idea. I, I need a, a few more likes on the, I have 65 likes on part one and it went viral. I got over 2,000, 3,000 views, but I need a, a few more, 10 more likes on the second part so it'll go viral too. Come on, help them out, Vinyl Community. Those thumbs up make a big difference. All right, this is the recording of the Beatles from 2005 in the original shipping box. Okay. Got the sealed uh, bonus materials. This is a, the highest valued book there is on the Beatles in the world. Oh, wow. Sometimes these sell for close to $700. 
And this one's one of the first issues that was signed by the author. Oh, wow. Look at that. So Number four, 428. And who's the author on this? It's uh, Brian... Um, Why is it not showing there? Let's see if I can read this. You're going to have to read that autograph. Brian Kehu, K E H E W. Wow. And Kevin okay. Ryan. That those are the two that signed. Yeah. Yeah, I got a Mark Lewis John, uh, but that it looks it, it, what you're showing there is bigger, more expansive than what I own. This, this has uh, everything to do with all the equipment that the Beatles used when they re recorded all those yeah. uh, masterpieces. Yeah, it's funny. And some of that gear has made its way into private collector's hands around the world now. Some of the old consoles and machines so, and gear. So it that has some wear on the edges. But that's the way it was made. It was made to look like it was AIDS. Yeah, like a relic guitar kind of idea. Well, that's beautiful. So you're looking around 700 for something like that. Yes. Uh, our friend Patricia's got a great channel herself, a little Beatles corner. I love the name of her channel. She'd like to know what you personally collect, if you're willing to share. what. Is there anything you like to collect for yourself, Frank? Any interests that way? I... I um, don't. I go after the Holy Grails of Beatles, Led Zeppelin, and Rolling Stones, and I don't. I pretty much. Uh, I have a resale license. I don't pay sales tax. I uh, yeah. I turn it over and uh, always go after the next thing. I, I like I, I'm glad to uh, own it for two weeks yeah. to a month, or sometimes I only own, own it for a couple of days. Uh, yeah, Kimball goes, he collects dollars, is what the Frank collects. Maslow, Norman Maslow, is no mean collector himself. He's got a lot of stuff. Uh, guess later in retirement, I have a lot to sell. Of course, Mazzy, the biggest non Beatles channel is the Beatles channel. It, it, he's in denial about his Beatles channel ness. He really, yeah, he, he, he said that on Sarah the Raging Tomato the other day that that passion when he heard the Beatles on Ed Sullivan, uh, yeah, changed everything. Like so many. Uh, Funko Pops have any value uh, in your collecting sphere? I've you had the Funko? set of uh, Beatles and the Blue Mini before, but you know, they're so picky about those boxes, and they got to be in box protectors. And yeah, I, I got out of that because uh, it's like Barbies. They're, they're real, real picky on the uh, collecting those Funko Pops. A question from Tim. He says, I'd like to know how much time, hours, Frank spends searching out all these Beatles rarities and treasures. How much time is this consumed? Uh, what would you say? Two, two to three hours a day, every day, seven At days least, a week. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is a full-time job. And obviously, it, it as you can tell from some of these price of vinyl community, it can be quite lucrative. But keep in mind, whenever you're selling something, it means you're buying it or, or you know putting something out to acquire it in the first instance, you turn it around, you sell it, and you hope that there's going to be a margin of profit there. This is the first time I've ever had the uh, play tape from 1967 with the original shipping box. Okay, now teach us about that. What's this all about? Uh, when the, they were trying to come up with uh, more portable ways of playing music, they had a little player. Uh, they started... They invented this in 1966, but the Capitol Records didn't approve it until 1967. Yeah. But that's the original shipping box. They were made in Japan that held uh, four of these in the box when it was shipped from Japan. Oh, okay. So this uh, product originated in Japan? Well, it's like the laser disc. Um, that's where they... Yeah, that's where they were manufactured, but they were made for the United States because they're made for Capitol Records. And this, uh, this is that Holy Grail I got, the most expensive factory reel to reel that exists in the world of the Beatles White Album, Volume 1, Volume 2, that has the seven songs edits. It's the only official release that has edits for Paul is Dead on seven of the songs. Holy moly. Now, this is something 
that our friend Harry at Harry's Music Room, uh, I'm sure, would be interested in. So they had, on Dear Prudence, they took out the round, round, round. On, yep. don't, on don't Pass Me By, they, they edited it out. I'm sorry that I doubted you. And Glass Onion, they edited it out. I told you about the, uh, the clue for you all. I told you about the Morris was Paul. Yeah. Now, who did the edits on this? Who who made that? Did you know uh, anything about that? Ampex tapes put them out, but the uh, they don't say um, they just say Apple Records. So I guess it had to be an order from Capitol Records out in L.A. that uh, these the rumors were so big in 1969. They thought that they needed to edit these out for this release, but this is the only official release that have these edited out. Oh, okay, so okay, so the whole idea. So there's some backlash against the Paul is dead rumors, and they actually addressed, or at least in this one instance, one there was instance. actually an attempt made to uh, to address it all to try and quell these rumors. Of course, I've the never. Other, the other edits was a uh, Helder Skeller. They took 52 seconds out. Revolution number nine. They took uh, one minute and 37 seconds out of the song. Yeah, and the. Um, can you take me back right before at the, towards the end of the uh, album? They took that out completely. And uh, why don't we do it in the road? They took 32 seconds out and your blues. They took one verse edited out. So it's uh, like 15 minutes shorter. And if you notice Blackbird in side two, which is different and happiness is a warm guns or Blackbird inside one and happiness yeah. is warm guns is uh the first song inside too yeah absolutely unique i mean interesting more for because there are such oddities in terms of their collectability they're um you know because obviously you want to have more you want to have the best cut you can on these things and then another factory reel to reel i got with this uh, collection i got this all things must pass yeah george's masterpiece uh that's all on uh, one one reel Folks, you can go to Mr. Stickmania two eight five three. This it's an amazing uh, feedback here. He's is, he's weighing in at ninety nine point nine percent positive feedback over decades that he's been doing this. Fifteen thousand items sold, uh, just amazing. And what you're seeing here are some of the latest items available. Uh, Led Zeppelin sixty nine. I mean. Holy smokes. BC-13 factory sealed. Uh, some amazing items. Monkeys, he's got stuff from the monkeys on the on the page. And in fact, Frank, if you'll allow me, I'll, I'll go online. While you're doing that, I'll just show your page so they can get a look at what's okay. going on with your uh, page. Okay, so hang on to that for a sec. Right. I'll just share the screen and show uh, show the kids what they get. So here it is. Here's the page on eBay. And you'll find in the description of this video. You like the Butcher album? How about this? Beatles original, East Coast 66 mono, a third state butcher. The butcher uh, comes in three states. One with the original cover on it. Two with the slick on it. And three is when that's on it and you peel it off. That's an amazing peel job because you've largely preserved the cover on that thing. That's remarkable. This is this is the one I did uh, two nights ago, the East Coast. That's up for uh, eighteen hundred dollars. Okay, now hold, yeah, just look at this. Uh, Zep two original sixty nine first Robert Ludwig hot mix seven hundred right there, kids. That's the uh, PO, that's the Presswell pressing. That's the uh, second best rated after the Monarch. Yeah, it's it's got press well, but it is a Robert Ludwig, highly desirable. So if you don't want to put 200, 2,000 away on a Zeppelin album, and here you go, 4,444 Zeppelin, 69, UK turquoise. rare, first press, A1, B1, turquoise laminate, boom. Factory yeah, okay. skills, Exxon um, Main Street. Somebody mentioned uh, my last live stream. That can't be a holy grail if I found two of them in two months. Well, <laughs> I, I disagreed. I said, I'm, I got lucky, but you won't see another one of those for another year. Wow. 
Uh, I think this is just amazing. Folks, a lot of people are looking for the horses. Here's a DMM. True Stereo, 277. Beatles Magical Mystery Tour, Horzu available. Tremendous. Tremendous. Here's that uh, Beatles White Album that Frank's showing. So you can get over there. Anything Frank's showing here, you can look at in more detail over on his page. And you can see it goes from page one to two, three. It goes and goes and goes. 48 ounces per, per page. So there's going to be something in everybody's budget. And uh, I just I just get so impressed. I have so much fun looking around, Frank. All right, what do we got here? <laughs> uh, one, one thing to answer your question the other day, if nobody did on your live stream, the yeah. Eggman was Eric Burden from the Animals. Okay, Eric Burden from the Animals. Good, 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 good. I'm the Eggman. He oh. liked to break an egg on a naked chick's uh, body. Oh, my God. What about these interests these rock and rollers have? Yeah. Breaking eggs on so John Lennon picked up on that, and that's where I am the Eggman came from. Well, that is crazy. And then one other thing, and I'll show these rest of memorabilia. The George Borden on his last uh, all night live stream. Yes, he said that in the seventies and eighties, Billy Joel was a more prolific songwriter than Paul McCartney. And so this morning, I looked up the number. Top 10 songs Paul McCartney had in the 70s and 80s versus um, Billy Joel. Billy Joel, and there, there was no comparison. You got Paul McCartney, another, these are all top 10. Another Day, Uncle Robert, Hi, 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 My Love, Live and Let Die, Helen Wills, Jet, Band on the Run, Junior's Farm, Listen to What the Man Said, Silly yeah. Love Songs, Let Him In, Maybe I'm Amazed Live, Mull of Kintyre, With a Little Luck, Good Night Tonight Coming Up. Ebony and Ivory, take it away. The girl is mine. Say, 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 no more lonely nights and spies like us. I'd say he's that's no slouch. Um, yeah, I'm obviously, I mean, McCartney, huge output period during that period of time. My and personal then, um, favorite, Billy Joel, you know, Billy Joel, you got just the way you are. My life, you may be right. It's still rock and roll to me. Tell her about an uptime girl. You're only human, a matter of trust. We didn't start a fire. I go to extremes in the river of dreams. So I rest my case, George. Yeah, it looks like Paul takes the lead on that one. But still, pretty impressive for Billy Joel, for you, Billy. Yeah. I know Massey's a big Billy Joel fan. And uh, so I know that Massey was probably a little tear right now. Uh, don't worry, Massey. I know that you love Billy Joel. And also, he's a big, he's also very big on Elton John, is another one Mazzy will frequently discuss. Uh, I, Billy I, did, I did like uh, Billy Joel's new song. It's a, it's a shame they didn't release the Grammy live version instead of that uh, AI uh, <laughs> version they, they released. It would have been a bigger hit. Uh, okay, now what's going on with the Red and Blue? The kids are going, hey, you're charging too much for the Red and Blue Beatles album, the new reissue that came uh, out. $244 offer I sent out. They, they That's one thing that it goes up in value because it was only uh, available for a couple of hours on the Beatles store site, and they never pressed them again, that Red and Blue vinyl in the slipcase. Oh, the red. so the, the vinyl itself is colored. Yeah, I got that. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, red and blue. Well, so okay, the okay. Yes, so, and then I, Travis gonna try to find that for me. This is the uh, butcher cover I did uh, two nights ago. Took me about two and a half hours. Wow. And I, yeah, I'm always impressed with the number of butcher albums that come your way. And that's the uh, trunk slick. I have two more butchers coming. I have an East Coast and a West Coast. Remind the kids the difference of the East Coast and West Coast when it comes to peeling them. Uh, this has a water-based glue that you can steam peel. And the uh, West Coast has a uh, real strong glue that uh, the steam won't, won't help. You have to do it uh, bit by bit. Yeah. With, uh, rubbing, rubbing alcohol or something in, and even saliva, it takes a long, long time. This is the red and blue in the shipping box. I don't know if it's, it's never even been opened up, but it's yeah. a red and blue vinyl. 
that only was available for a couple hours on the um, Beatles store site. I'm selling it the way it is. It's never been opened up. Okay. So unique to the Beatles store is the, the reason that one's fetching more than say anything else we got. Yeah. The Beatles store uh, released about the let it be uh, yesterday telling, telling all about that. But the, that the only, there's only a few items on that now and then. The cassette is valuable, and that red and blue vinyl is yeah. uh, valuable if it's in a slipcase. And then the Spotify 10-inch, they're the only things that have held their value since they've been released. Yeah, it's interesting because all of this stuff, remixes and the like, and their contemporary releases, I've got them all because I'm a Beatles you know, fan and a collector, and so I have all the all the new stuff. And it was interesting, Frank, because you got a BC-13 box oh, only no, no. for sale. All right, we'll get to that in a bit. We're working on our white album. I mean, not our white album, but your album here. This is the uh, West Coast with a more natural tint, and that's the East Coast where it has a purple tint. Added yeah, to more it. purple. I can see that, yeah. And they were all trimmed three-sixteenths of an inch so that Capitol Records knew when they were in record stores, which one had the butcher covers underneath, but they didn't tell anybody. Oh, okay. they yeah. Yeah, just lovely. Hey, Apple Pits, get a hold of um get a hold of Raging Tomato Sarah. She wants to feature you on her program with some music. Uh so uh make sure you make that happen. Uh, Sarah reached out, made a comment. On one of my uh, uh, one of the last live streams we did, get over there, uh, and Melody. She wants to have some of your music on her program. I think it's a great idea. So this hopefully is, you guys can work that out. All right, let's go, friends. This is a, the flip your wig game. Yes, it has the original content still in the uh, factory shrink, and there's no uh, corner splits on the box. These are real tough to find with no corner splits in the box. Yeah, box lid. I love that. I mean, we'll talk about a novelty, the whole, the long hair thing. So uh, when this was sold, sold yeah. in the stores in 64, all they did was put a price tag on the end of, down here. And yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't uh, shrink wrapped. So just, yeah, the cardboard and uh, provided for people. Of course, I'm old enough to remember all that stuff. And the Beetle wig became kind of a trope back in the day. You know, Beetle, even the Fantastic Four comic book had the uh, thing, Ben Grimm wearing a Beetle wig in one of their episodes. A lot of questions for you. Uh, would the slipcase be the same or different from the black vinyl version also sold? Are you referencing to the, yeah, he's referencing the Beatles red and blue. They, 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 uh, they made more of the slip case with the black vinyl. So it's, it's not, uh, it doesn't get, yeah, it doesn't call for the same price. Also, Frank, have you ever sold a first state butcher album? Oh, yeah, I knew we were going to get to this sooner or later. All right. First state. Yes, Christopher, I love I it. Didn't, I didn't want to handle this again, but for you, Rachel, I'll do it. Well, bless your heart. I love the fact that we got to show them this. First State Butcher. So this is how the album came out. It was on stands for about half an hour, as I understand it. Capital put out an emergency uh, memorandum to everybody. Every store that carried it said, pull that album. Get it off the shelves. But there was still time for a number of these to get in the hands of the public. Go ahead, Frank. Explain this more about the first, second, and third state Beatles. This is a first state that's um, with a COA from Perry Cox. He uh, authenticated this in last year, 2023. Okay. He says it's one of the best in the world, and it's in near mint condition. Wow. Yeah, just gorgeous, Frank. $18,888. Yeah. Somebody messaged me. They couldn't believe I haven't sold it yet. Well, I mean, when it's going for these kind of high high prices, there are collectors in the world that have pockets that deep that would be uh, willing to put that out. So it's just a matter of time, but it will happen. Yeah, it'll happen. Um, someday, someday when I'm not alive... 
And maybe if my son had this, it would be a fifty thousand dollar home. Yeah, it's just, and of course, that's the uh, one rule in nature. It seems that as time progresses, all this stuff seems to go up and up in price and value. And the Beatles, in my opinion, are going to be looked at as the Mozart says the Beethovens of our age. Uh, in terms of music, popular music. The Beatles still have popularity. I know my uh, son likes them. He's 30, so he's already a, an older. Yeah, that, that's what character. keeps it going. It keeps getting reinvented. Uh, like Mike from the Ingram says, there's teenagers that come into his record store every day in Phoenix yeah. and look for uh, Led Zeppelin albums. The Beatles have done very well in terms of uh, uh, maintaining and uh, propagating their legacy. Uh, they've been very effective at doing that and reaching a smaller uh, or making a, reaching a younger audience. Yeah, Grant, I just I just heard that the uh, notification came through. Grant, we're on for tomorrow. It'll happen. We'll see you over at your channel. We'll get together. We'll have a chit chat. Meanwhile, let's get back to Frank. This is a weird uh, 1964 item. They found a warehouse find of a, the Beatles twig game that's uh, still sealed in the plastic package. Okay, this sounds new to me. Now, uh, the Beetle Twig game. Uh, what, how do you play it? Uh, you must have to put these little um, pieces on this, on these sticks, and I don't know how to play it. I can't tell you, but it's a nice little piece with the uh, official piece with the Beatles on the um, on the photos there, and it's approved by uh, NIMS Enterprises. Yeah. Now, Ems, do you, NIMS, do you remember what that stands for? Oh, uh, that was what Brian Epstein put together. That's what his record store was called. Is that, I think it's Northeastern, some Northeastern. Northeastern Music, maybe, in Liverpool. I think, was, I think that's what it stood for. And there were four record stores that uh, Brian Epstein's dad owned, and Brian Epstein just ran the one that yeah. was uh, conveniently two blocks from the cavern. Uh, here it is. Uh, Massey's got it. NEM stands for North End Music. North End. North End Music. North End. Yeah, like the North End of Liverpool, right? There's a little uh, Rolling Stones memorabilia. These <laughs> mini discs that were made in Japan from 1992. Yeah. It's a sealed. It's only rock and roll. And that's a sealed emotional oh, yeah. rescue. And then the uh, Some Girls is a seal. I'll show you what the mini discs look like. That didn't last very long. Now, can any of these, uh, you know, like uh, compact discs, people collect con compact discs, do they go for anything for like first generation, the original 1980, maybe in the, uh, the, in the 1987 box. HMV Sergeant Pepper uh, box set that I got in three days ago and I sold it instantly for $144. 144. You know, it's interesting because my uh, the technology was new. My friend got married in 1987, and the, the, the Beatles were out. I gifted him that as a present for him uh, back on that day. Now, here's something we recognize right away, that one on the left. Yes, this is a, a sealed import of uh, the German Magical Mystery Tour. Um, it has the Apple, but it's using the same uh, true stereo a mix that's on yeah. the poor zoo, the minus uh, A1, uh, B3. But I bought this uh, from um, Perry Cox. It's probably one of the few perfect old stock conditions left in the world. Yes. And uh, and that's available right now on the store? Yes. At, at uh, I sent an offer out uh, today for uh, $333. All right, kids. There's your horror zoo if you want one sealed. And this is the German Please Please Me in the late 70s, the same minus two, minus two cut that um, yeah. the Beatles has. The way you want to hear Please Please Me. Yeah, absolutely. Really nice to see. The, Ger the Germans and the Australians sure knew how to put out great albums there in the late 70s. So I think my 70s equipment that I have kind of it's well me playing these 70s pressing. Yeah, everything lines up in terms of its uh, uh, period dating. And this is a, what I think is the ultimate way to hear Beatles for sale. It's a 1977 Australian pressing. Right. And can you explain a little bit for the kids? I know it the has answer, mi but... minus one, minus one in the dead wax, but the clarity 
yeah. and the separation and the harmonies are just to die for. I'm tell us about there. tell us about the different covers. Why do they why do they look different than the UK ones? They could not uh, get in. I guess they couldn't get the um, the print. You know, the meet the with the Beatles over from England in time, so they had to create their own. And uh, John Lennon, when he went to Australia in 64, saw this album, and he was real upset. Yeah, here's the problem with it. it. Apparently, there was a law in place where it was a protectionist thing that the photography had to be done by an Australian national in order to protect you know, a foreign market from coming in and doing stuff, and it kind of put money in the hands of Australians. So they weren't able to use the uh, Beatles. They had to mock them up over in Australia and come up with their that's, own. That's the pictures of the Beatles in concert in 64 in Australia. Yeah, it I makes th sense that it, they would have actually used those. Yeah. I think in Sydney. If you ever watch that on YouTube, that's amazing 20 minutes of Beatles performance there in, Sweet, in uh, Australia. And then the with the Beatles got a, a different back cover too yeah look at that totally unique to the australian market kids great that you got those two frank i mean it's it amazes me the stuff that you get into your collection that you're able to uh to show people and uh into your store folks again uh, mr sticker mania can be found on ebay at the following address copy and go here and drop it in. So you, at your leisure, you can go over there and just take a look at the store, see what he's got to offer. And oh, even man. as a curio, if you don't have the money, definitely check uh, check it out, especially if you're a Beatles fan, collector, uh, Led Zeppelin, some great stuff over there, monkeys. All right. What are this we looking at? Meet the Beatles, the first issue, that they put the Beatles on coming, Beatles are coming sticker on it. Yeah. And this is when they couldn't keep up with the demand and they started covering them on other uh, capital record artists that weren't selling. Okay. Yeah, Fred Waring not uh, selling as much as the Beatles these days. Fred Waring, ladies and gentlemen. They were making them 24 hours a day. They couldn't keep up with the demand. Uh, Fred, uh, 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 do you get, um, uh, like, how do you put it? Uh, nervous a little bit uh, when you hold these things these days? Uh, some of them. I'm going to get nervous when I hold this. All right. What do we got? You might like this. You're a movie freak. I love movies. Yeah, I do. This is a $7,000 poster. Oh, wow. It looks like a Star Wars, and it is. This Look is the at year, that. This is a year before Star Wars came out, a teaser poster. And if you notice on the W, it's an upside down M. It was a mistake. Yeah, really, really different looking. So he went to San Diego, uh, Charles Lindicott. He was a mastermind for the campaign for Star Wars. And he went to uh, San Diego Comic Con in 1976. And this would have been one of the posters he had at his, at his table to promote Star Wars. Wow. So coming a year ahead of time, as Star Wars released in 77, I saw it, the opening, I think I saw it the opening night. Uh, I went in and saw Star Wars in 77. The first I'm selling night. that on consignment. I don't own that one. All right. So this is consignment, but it's related. I mean, obviously it's pop cultural oriented. Last, uh, week I, last week I had a Star Wars 1978. Uh, it's the first year anniversary birthday poster that had the uh, little Kenner figures on it. Yeah. And it was only given away at the Lucasfilm for their first year celebration. And I sold that for $2,777 last week. Um, I want to uh, answer Apple Pit's question. Rachel Scoff. What's the trend with keeping the album outside? I want you to know not everybody does it. Mazzy stores his old style. I store them like this. Here's a reissue of the 50th anniversary, for example. And what I the reason people do it is it cuts down on the ring wear that you'll get. Ring, ring wear and seam splits. And seam splits for mailing. 
So someone like Frank, who uh, sends a lot of these records out, he'll package them in a way to avoid any potential seam split by having that record just jostling around when it's being mailed. But that's the rationale, Melody, is to have the thing put in the back. Basically, it helps uh, remove the uh, ring wear. The other thing it helps you, don't pack your records so tight that they can't breathe. You know, that'll Here's a little Canada idea. trivia for you. All right, let's take this a look. This was a 1987 20th anniversary 3D uh, store poster for Sergeant Pepper. Yeah, very nice. So actually, yeah, the Beatles are standing out in front of everybody. Yeah, the, dr the drums to the front, and then the Beatles are in the middle, and the backdrop is yeah. behind it. Yeah, and just a trivia question. I was telling Sue this the other night. A lot of people think that's Marilyn Monroe over on the uh, left there, but it's Diana, actually Diana Doors. It's Diana Doors, the English actress, and uh, she, the and Beatles. Elvis, were... Elvis was over here, and he got knocked off in the last second. Elvis didn't make it. No. And uh, who's the guy? Massey knows this. Uh, I want to say Baker, or some Pete or Peter Banks that did but the Peter uh, Blake. Peter, Peter Blake. Blake did it. That's it. Peter Blake. And his wife at the time, Jan. How Howworth, I think it's her name. Yeah, I remember in '87, it was uh, Peter Blake has been signing Sergeant Pepper albums constantly for the since last, 30, then, yeah. last 30 years. He's made a living off of it. So, ring wearing seats, but it's great punk bands. Dan Goche, hey Dan, welcome to the show. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're being joined by Frank, Mr. Sticker Mania. We're happy to have him on board. Anytime he comes by, it's a lot of fun. Here's the VJ album that uh, uh, the uh, Capital passed on the Beatles initially. VJ got a hold of the first album. What do we that's got a, here? Frank? That's a version two stereo. The last one I sold for a thousand dollars. My God! It's got stereo on the top of the label, and it's got Beatles above the spindle hole. It's got "Please Please Me" on it. Yes, they're. they're uh, I have an ad back of version one in my uh, store in my bank vault. Uh, I like this comment. This is from Wolfie. He goes, uh, Wolfie, uh, a friend of mine is a bit of an expert on movie posters. He sells rare ones on eBay. He told me he's never seen the Star Wars, Star Wars one that Frank just shows. So yeah, you know, it's pretty rare. The, I had it for twenty seven hundred dollars. Also last week, yeah. I had five watchers. And the lady that I got us on consignment with here in town, she got upset and said, "You have to raise that to seven thousand dollars." I said, "Okay." Yeah, I don't. I don't have the actual numbers on that, Max. There. Uh, the question is, how prepared was America for the Beatles? They weren't prepared. I'll tell you that much. How many first pressings of introducing the Beatles were pressed? Uh, legitimate first pressings of it. Uh, there were uh, six thousand ad backs. And then there was a, a million of this version two sold, but uh, not very many stereos, only uh, like uh, less than 5% of them were stereo. So it goes some way to explaining what happened with the Beatles catalog and discography. So meet the Beatles uh, with the Beatles and Beatlemania with the Beatles, we got it in Canada, was kind of the first album that we got over here is uh, Meet the Beatles and Beatlemania with the Beatles for America and Canada, but they weren't reflective of Please Please Me, the first English album. That would come later in Canada under Twist and Shout, and you guys got it, what was it, early Beatles, I think is how they packaged it in the yes. States. Yes, but the, uh, the Beatlemania, uh, Perry Cox had the first issue in excellent condition, and it's already up to Two hundred dollars with uh, another day to go. It'll probably go. Uh, I'm not going to even tell you my secrets, but I know it's going to go for a lot. Wow, tremendous! Um, I got one of those Star Wars posters at my local Goodwill once. You are very fortunate. I mean, if you can find some like that, people often don't know the value of these old movie posters. That, that poster has a 1976 date that's wearing off on the very bottom, and that's pretty yeah. amazing, a year before Star Wars was released. Yeah, just, just part of the promotional packaging for it, you know, as they were doing it. Uh, Frank, are you going to get the Beatles record player on Record Store Day? Predictions on its future? 
value. So Record Store Day this year is featuring a Beatles marketed, branded little record player with tiny little records. That I, you tried, can I tried to get one yesterday. And it went from three fifty to four hundred dollars in in an hour. Three different people released it, uh, put it on eBay, and it kept going up in value. Oh, I wonder if there's any out there. Little tiny Beatles record. Well, they come out this Saturday, but the yeah. people that, that are selling them are probably the record store owners. They're selling them online, and uh, they're, they're all going to sell out the first day for sure. I mean, it'll probably be. Uh, over five hundred dollars within a couple weeks. Okay, yeah. Now, because you had that uh, 1964 yeah, record I, player, I, take, I took that the magnetic tape recorder. I'll have it back uh, in about four weeks. So for our next uh, interview, I should have it back. Maybe I can play a song on it that's uh, not uh, Beatles copyright. Yeah, I'm just looking out there. The Beatles drink coasters. I'm just kind of looking around. I'm not. When, when Denny them. Lane died, I played a little bit of the middle section of Go Now, and I got away with it. Uh, yeah, Jose, go three inch of Rachel. Three is in three. Three inch records. Yeah. This is a, a 1972. I got from Perry Cox and never been played. Blue label. Back yeah. off, Boogaloo. Oh, great song, by the way. Now, yeah, Ringo, Denise, Ringo Denise is about Paul McCartney. I'm here to tell you, that's about Paul McCartney. It's that, all about Paul McCartney. Of course it is. He went to Paul's house uh, in probably 71 or something, and they started arguing because he was trying to tell them they needed to have Alan Klein as manager, and Paul threw him out. And I think George probably wrote this song for Ringo because he did that a lot and didn't take credit. Yeah, of Boogaloo. It Don't Come Easy is another one that George had a lot to do with. This is the uh, matte version of the picture sleeve and the glossy version of this weird-looking picture sleeve for back off Boogaloo. Yeah. So, yeah, what do you got? It's Harry Nelson. I feel Harry Nelson's influence on that, something with it. <laughs> They're um, hanging around with Harry Nelson. He was hanging with Mark Bolin at the time. I don't know if he was hanging with Harry Nelson. Harry no. was in the scene yet. Yeah, yeah. I think... Uh, Harry Nelson did go to uh, England. They invited him to England in the uh, 60, uh, 67, but I don't think they became buddies until uh, the lost weekend of John Lennon. Uh, I like that comment from uh, Melody. I got a 16 millimeter print, a very rare original Star Wars. Star Wars and a really interesting uh, release uh, on home video and the like, because there's a moratorium on the original. They've done so many changes to it. That it's hard to find, and this is why some of the laser discs of Star Wars are highly sought after because you can get the way it originally looked and how we saw it in the theaters way back when. And here's another one that's really interesting. I think Mel Brooks, when he did Spaceballs, there is a Goofy, uh, Disney character Goofy, built into the superstructure of the big long panning shot of the overly long ship which Brooks is doing as a send-up on the start of Star Wars, I think Disney got after Mel Brooks and said, you get rid of that, because uh, I can't see it in any subsequent print since I first saw that at the theater, because it was so funny. It just cracked me up. And I look for it again. I've never seen it in any uh, broadcast version of it since. And I've got all the films, but uh, uh, I own Spaceballs, and it seems to have been edited right out, and I think... Obviously, some sort of copyright issue with that. My own picture. Yeah. RC Look, Cola? Here's some photos of me in 1992 when I went to the Roy Orbison tribute concert out in yep. L.A. at the Universal Amphitheater. That was my backstage pass. This is with me with uh, Don Waz. Oh, yes, of course. This is with me with um, Talking Heads. uh I'm not going to come up with a keyboard player right at the moment. Maybe Mazzy can help me out on that. Yeah, Talking Heads keyboard player. I'll look it up. Because it'll drive you nuts not to get the name. Uh, Jerry Harrison. Jerry Harrison. There's me with Jerry Harrison. That's when I actually had some hair. Yeah, boom. Paul Stanley, Thanks, a, kiss. Paul Stanley a Kiss. Yes. I was sitting behind Paul Stanley and Ozzy Osbourne 
And Ozzy Osbourne was so fidgety, I got his autograph, but he would never be still for a second to get a picture. Yeah. That's me with John Hyatt. They say I look a little bit like John Hyatt. Yeah. No, he got permission from... Uh, Mel Brooks got permission from George Lucas. He didn't get permission from Disney to use Goofy and put Goofy in the superstructure of the ship. All right, here we go. What do we got? This is um, Slim from the Stray Cats. The Stray yeah. Cats performed a song, and he's with his girlfriend at the time, Britt Eklund. Oh. One of, uh, I think he, she was in James Bond movie. And she yeah, was a, she was with, uh, she was in, Britt Eklund was with uh, Peter Sellers in uh, Shot in the Dark, I think. And she was a <laughs> former wife of uh, Rod Stewart. Or Elkie Summers. That's Elkie Summers I'm thinking of. Um, this was the hardest picture to get because they said, uh, "Don't you can get his autograph, but don't take any pictures of him because he was looked like he hadn't shaved or took a shower in two days of uh, Bob Dylan. That's Bob's luck, though. That's how Bob goes. Yeah. So that my, is great. The, the buddy I was with snuck a picture real quick of uh and there were other people taking pictures of Bob also. Yeah, I mean, gosh, what a legend that guy is. And Slim Jim Phantom, part of the Sunset Strip scene, hung down at the Whiskey at Go-Go and the like, kind of part of the uh, the uh, scene down there in L.A. Uh, during the 80s and 90s, of course, into the 90s. This was one of my uh, trivia questions the other day on besides the turquoise and the John Lennon roots. Yeah. They had to know what inserts were in here, and somebody got it, and and I sent them out a a, a butcher cover in the mail a couple of days ago. One I practiced on. Yeah. But this is a Let It Bleed 1969 in the shrink with the hype sticker. Nice. And it has the uh, poster inside. It doesn't have the fan club insert. They didn't put that in every one. Of them. Yeah. But this is going out in the mail today. It's already sold for 122 dollars. Really nice. See. Folks, and not everything's like, you know, 500 bucks up uh, that he's got in the store. Check it out. You, uh, you may find uh, something that Frank has over on his channel, Mr. Sticker Mania on eBay. And uh, just check it out. And um, you'll like this one, the uh, marble version of uh, Sergeant Pepper from uh, 78 from uh, Canada. All right, let's take a look. Oh, yes. There you go. Canadian content, kids. And again, here's the link over to uh, Frank's channel on eBay. Take a look. I got this from uh, Perry Cox the other day. This is the last of the Ed Rudy estate that Gary Hahn bought. And then uh, Rockaway Records bought it all. And Perry Cox is selling these down to the last few sealed uh, issues. This is a Ed Rudy American tour with Ed Rudy, volume, uh, I guess it's volume two. And it's got the uh, teen magazine still sealed inside. Yeah. And it's got the insert. And it's got a uh, COA from uh, Gary Johnson. He's a brother of Wayne Johnson out there in Rockaway Records. Uh, okay, now, uh, who is uh, this uh, Rudy character? Is he a DJ? Is he an author? What's what's his claim he, to He uh, interviewed, he would uh, make a living off of interviewing. They did the Stones, the Beatles, and Dave Clark Five, and he put out interview albums. And he was an American reporter to travel. The, okay. he, he traveled with the uh, Beatles beat, it said. But he met him in uh, Washington, D.C., and then he... Um, did a lot of interviews with the Beatles. Wow. Yeah. That's a, that's a Hey Jude uh, first issue with the small hype sticker. I got that on my eBay store for uh, yeah. $400. Great album. Uh, I always like those strange albums. It's an Alan Klein kind of uh, pushed idea. Yeah. The first issue is Paul's pants aren't tinted, so he doesn't stand out. Yes. He, he got upset. So the second issue is they, they tinted his pants uh, blue. So it would stand oh, out on so the, stand out a little bit better. Yeah, stand out. All so right. Paul Good Paul, Paul uh, would have fits and he controlled a lot of stuff. And then the last thing I got here on the table is the uh, the rarest the hardest ticket stub to find because it was their biggest show of all time it was sold out uh 65 at uh, Shea Stadium. 
Yeah, I mean, what a what a show. And of course, that record has since been broken, but the Beatles did it first. That's what counts. Yeah, they did it first. Great shots. Mick, ja Mick Jagger was in the audience. Um, yeah. Linda McCartney was in the audience. You know, now, okay, so the, what's the, now what is this you're holding? Because I own that. I know I, I had that in the 70s. I That's a that. 65 uh, tour program. I had that. It was then. the same program uh, for yeah. all the concerts that in America. Yeah, I own that thing back in the 77 or so. Things go better with Coke. That's one of the first promotions there. Yeah, isn't that London, something? London Fog. Wow. Frank, just wonderful. Really love uh, having you come by and uh, show these, uh, truly these uh, treasures, artifacts from a bygone era. Of course, my favorite band, the Beatles, and uh, the favorite band of so many people. Uh when Brian Epstein passed, it always kind of like Paul managed to be else, his work ethic and drive. Yeah, he, he's definitely the work ethic guy, and he certainly had the drive. Uh, the Ed Ruby album, a question from Harry for you, Frank. Does it have the 35 cents on the cover? Yeah, you just said on the ground. No, I'm behind that. Uh, uh, it might, but I mean, the the teen magazine covers is is sealed inside, so it covers up everything. Yeah, it, so it's obscured, uh, Harry. Well, Frank, absolutely wonderful having you uh, drop by. We've been here uh, over an hour with you. Uh, yeah, I, think I know you're pretty. You're probably pretty tired. I saw caught the last half hour. You were getting a, you get a little. Um, Abuse, I think, for a few of your panels there. Well, then not everybody likes, uh, you know, Trump like I do. So yeah, that's the way it goes, yeah. And, and Wolfie right. Baby, uh, he, if he makes a comment or Joe May, oh, they get, they, uh, Wax goes after him. Oh, there's always, you know, it never, it's never a dull moment. Uh, yeah. I don't know if your shades are hip or geriatric. Let's call them both. Uh, I'm a hip geriatric. I want to thank my guest, Mr. Sticker Mania. Links to his YouTube channel. Please subscribe. Uh, he's got great content and lots of rare items from. Uh, yeah, I have a, a lot uh, coming in here in the next couple of weeks, so I'll have another barn burner for you better. in uh, May. Yeah. All right, we're yeah, we have Frank come by once a month. I just enjoy our collabs. Tomorrow, I'm getting together over on Grant's house, Grant's Rock Warehouse. I'll be hanging out with Grant around five o'clock Pacific. Uh, if you're into that, please come over, join us, support all these great channels, including uh, our good friend, our dear friend, uh, Frank and his son, Travis. And again, one last time, I want to thank, because I got you here publicly, this is absolute treasure. The Beatles in mono, the book is here. Uh, I'm and so, it, sorry about the mono box. I had uh, three of them I sold in a week's time before you were on the Before I... You know, the beauty is, Frank, I know that you're going to run across. I just somehow, something tells me you're yeah. going to run across one in the future. And when you do, put it aside. I'll buy it. Yeah, I, it's going to be safe for you. Thank you so much. Uh, Frank and Travis, everybody, it's Mr. Sticker Mania. Thanks so much. Bye for now. See you. Put a like on the video, by the way, kids. Thanks. Boom.